the great to get one of the niggas adventure Must be dementia That you ever thought you could touch our credentials What's the addition? We initially met each other First time I met Nas was like around in 96 On tour It was Smoking Groove's tour Had a lot of hip hop artists on it And Nas was a part of it also that's where I met him for the first time. I got the ganja, and we can blaze it up on your block if you wanna, or haze it up stairs, spots in a hummer, or you can run up and a fan. We invited him to be on road to Zion, and that's kind of where it all really began. In this world of calamity, dirty looks and grudges and jealousy, and police where you abuse their maturity, be the clowns when I know about variety. We're just excited about the music, you know what I mean? I remember one night and I said to me, yo, we should make this. A full album, I mean, I wouldn't know if you'd say that it was Nas' idea or whoever's idea, but I think it's just the overall momentum of the music and the energy. And I remember Nas saying it to me first still, that, you know, we should just make this album. You remember that? Yeah, he was doing it, I said, yo, let's do an album. Yeah. He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was working on an EP. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily reggae, it's not rap. The theme of it is Africa, right? It would have to be someone else that heard it to kind of categorize it. Cate categorize it, yeah, categorize it. You could call it world music, you know? You can call it world music or just vibe music, you know? The fact that it's coming out this year with the thing that happened in Haiti, it kind of made um, each song on the record have, have more meaning have a, a double meaning because we were already on our own movement with the record trying to make a record that really talked about things like Haiti. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, New York to Cali, for the money, power, respect is a journey. Some will get left behind because in life you cannot press rewind, get it right. You only have one first chance that, to make which, one first I think we try to express ourselves honestly whenever it come on to whatever topic it may be, whether you want to see it as an activist or political or whatever the case may be, just honest you know, expressions and thoughts on certain situations and topics. And whereas the music and uplifting people is concerned, we just hope that the songs will, will inspire people, you know what I mean? Same energy that we're trying to bring across in the songs, we just hope it relates and that people are inspired take their destiny into their own arms. People in Jamaica have an interest in Barack Obama. When he, when he won the election, it was, you know, like a celebrating in Jamaica. More so because of what it means, as, you know what I mean? Having a person like him win for the first time. I don't understand why. I mean, this is, it's not human to fight health care. It's not human. It's suicidal, straight up. How do you not want health care? I don't understand. There's no other, there's nothing to explain to me either. I just don't understand. Every other country has it, except us, because of, it's money involved, you know? But, yeah, I, I love Barack. I love him. I love the president. I wanted to ask you about the J Electronica Act 2. Um, cool is doing you. Get money how you get it. But cool got to mean something else too, because if we having babies, if we plan on getting old, if we want to know about health and stuff like that, let's get educated. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, no idea is original, there's nothing new under the sun It's never what you do but how it's done What you base your happiness around Material women and large paper That means you inferior, not major I wanted to ask you about the J Electronica Act 2 It's never what you do but how it's done J Electronica is a problem He's not here to just entertain you He's, he's going above and beyond his what he needs to do to just entertain. He's 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 ready to do something else. And with his music, I think Jay Electronic is gonna do he's gonna do um, a lot of justice to the game. He's 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 one of my favorites out there right now.
The hood converted from three bags to twenties a girl Everybody had money, every summer was real ill Four finger rings, dope dealers came K-9 no is an artist that I really, um, that I met through Damien And, um, he grew up in Somalia, rough The way it's rough over there would make the toughest streets in the United States seem like Disneyland like me growing up in the projects is like rough, yeah. But everybody in the United States can relate to that. None, none of us here can relate to what someone like K9 is growing up with in Somalia. We have him on the album, and he, he, what he told us was like from from my records, he learned English. So hip hop music is like everything. So even where he's at, he's learning English by listening to what we have to say. Alright, enough of that. I said I'm going to do, I'm going to get my high school diploma, and I want a hundred men from every state. What's that? About five thousand people, young or old, who stop going to school because it's boring. Doesn't teach you about you. It doesn't. You know what it is. But we still need it. It's, a, it's very important. If I say I want 100 men from every state in the United States to go back to school with me, I think that can make a difference somehow. Not for me. Not. I don't need it for my name. I don't want that. But what I'm just saying is it can be cool. What we consider cool is. It's nothing, it has nothing to do with school. Someone brought it up when I spoke to some kids at the Boys and Girls Club. So it got out there. So I got a lot of dudes that's called me that's in their 40s that don't have a diploma. So I guess in the next few weeks or so, I'll, I'll make that proper statement on what I want to do with that. But my daughter's my inspiration, and now my son also. best is driving my life to name my daughter my strength. My son is star will be my resurrection. Born in correction, all the wrong shit I did. He'll be the right direction. How you live in larger broken Yo, this is Nas. Yo, this is Demon Marley. And you're watching Wrap Up TV. Keep it locked. When the project came together, first and foremost, because of being fans of each other's music, you know what I mean? First time we worked together was on Road to Zion, which is on my last album. And then um, Nazad called me also to, to do some work with him on, on um, Hip Hop Is Dead album. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? That, that track never really came together to make that album, but you know what? We got in the studio. Uh, and it's just been building from there, you know, the energy from there. So, really, between our, you know, our managers, our team of managers, you know, they came up with the idea of us to do an LP, an uh, EP, sorry, an EP kind of based around Africa, you know, and we started working on that and just decided to make it an album. Obviously, you know, everyone's talking about hip hop, how will it be affected with Wayne being gone for the next eight months to a year. How do you guys think it'll be changed or be changed at all? Do you think it will be with his absence? I mean, yeah, I mean, we've been hearing nothing but Wayne for the past two, two years, three years. You know, if, if it's a shortage of Wayne records, the game has definitely shifted a little bit. His absence is definitely felt. Everyone's talking about like the, the Drakes, the J. Coles, Nicki Minaj. What do you think of the new class? We love them. All of them. J. Electronica, you know, J. Cole, Drake, Nicki Minaj, everybody. We, we, we love them. It's an extended family right there. I think J. Cole is fire. I think uh, Drake is fire too. So, yeah, those are the next ones up. We just now have to see what they do. They get there to the get to the plate, hold that bat up, knock it out the park. What do you think about the current state of hip hop, Nas? I mean, I dig it. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching it get even better every day and it's getting better with the people we just named you know and um it's gonna get better even more so i'm i'm happy is it in a better place now than it was two years ago um it's a, in a better place since i dropped hip hop's yeah. dead album um i'll say that
A lot of things are down, not just CD sales, a lot more important things uh, are down in the economy. And um, music is bigger than just a sale of a record this year. Music is going to, there's always going to be a business of music. There's always going to be some phenomenon that takes over, you know what I mean, the next Michael Jackson or whatever. It's always going to happen and someone's always going to make money off it. It's always going to be records that sell. Um, physical CDs will always be around. I mean, of course, they probably won't be there, you know, in the future like they have been at one point, but they're always going to be around. There's places I go, people still use vinyl. There's people that collect vinyl. It's people that, you know, it becomes a, it's the CD becomes like a collector's item, like an eight track or a, a, a cassette. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in some way, they'll always be around and people will find uses again for TD, TDK cassette tapes one day. Somebody will find a reason to pull up analog master reels again. I mean, it's it's here. Mr. Nasir Jones and Damian Marley. Legendary in the building. How did you guys, let's tell everybody how you guys kind of um, got together and we'll give you guys the idea to collab on the album, Distant Relatives. Respect. Yeah. yeah. Mutual respect. We want to be fans of each other's music, you know? It's really how it all came about. And what, and what made it actually move, because you guys have done records together before, what made it move from uh, just you guys kind of talking and doing records to like, let's do a real project and get up together and make it happen? I mean, we both like how each other work. We like our work ethic. We like uh, our music, each other's music. So we um, uh, did a song with him and then we talked about doing another record. And um, I think we were just drawn to it. It was just something that just made us want to do it. How was it like working together with each other in the studio? Fun, it was a lot of fun, you know? Yes. Yeah, and, and very creative, you know? What is a Nas and Damian Marley studio session like? Very smoky. <laughs> <laughs> I could have guessed that. <laughs> very loud. What can, people, what can fans expect to see if they come see you live? A lot of fun, man. We like, you know, you coming to see hip hop, you come yeah. to see reggae, and then we just morph it together. Absolutely. and make a new kind of, not a new sound, but just an interesting kind of music. And you know, it's fun for me because I didn't drop a record in the summer in a long time. So being out there with the audience, it's like no roof, just yeah. people, it's gonna be good. What was the earliest memory that you have, both individually uh, to answer, of realizing that you had the skill, that you were gonna develop as an artist? What was your first memory? Well, I have pictures of myself in Pampas holding a guitar, you know what I mean? It's something that when I was a little kid, it would be like a ritual every night before going to bed, I would pretend to be on stage and sing up one of my father's songs and stuff like that. So music is something that I grew up with, you know? I mean, early, like, you know, you'd be outside and you see the guys building speakers to, and to plug up the, the stuff, the plugs and the street lamps and the two turntables. And even if you were in the house, you hear like those speakers are so big, they'd be vibrating. Excuse me, vibrating is just so crazy. You hear all these different records that you know you, you're supposed to be outside where they at mm -hmm. listening. You can't wait to get old enough to get outside and hang out there and just watch the DJ and watch what's really going on. And um, the radio wasn't playing it. I was a kid. The radio was barely playing rap music on, on the radio, so you would only hear it in the streets. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then my pop being a music, musician, he brought me into studios and I saw him on stages and stuff doing his music and it was like, you know, um, I want to do it. When you hear the name or see the name, you see the album cover, this the relative, you can think of relatives and think of family. You can feel like you're a part of this. You can feel like this is a part of you when you see it, you know? That's a feeling that you should get when you see, the, see that album. A lot of artists from hip hop and reggae have done collaborations over the years. There have been no albums, but then again, you don't really see that happening a lot of time where two artists, two separate solo artists will come together and do a full collaborative album anyway. You know what I mean? So this whole thing is unique and many different sides, you know? But there has always been a history and a closeness between reggae and, and hip hop. 
Yeah, we both wrote together. Every song we did in the studio, and you know, D would lay down the track, and then he'd probably have a couple of verses to throw in there, and I had to join in, just find my place in there. You know what I mean? And ch kind of challenge myself to rap over a beat with more rhythm, more melody than the average hip hop beats, you know? So that was just a challenge for me to rhyme over, so it was great. You know what I mean? I'm a big fan of Nas music. Nas come across very intelligent in his music. Even before meeting him, I would always perceive him as a very intelligent person. Working with him, he's a perfectionist, you know what I mean? He, he, he'll write three, four verses and, and choose which one he likes out of it. But, but you know, the first two verses that he'll write will completely blow you away and you can't see why he wants to rewrite it. But when he does rewrite it and gets it to the point where, you know, he's comfortable with it and you understand fully, okay, and this is why this is a great Nas, you know what I mean? And why he's revered. The music I rapped on was that far from what I do. It was just working with another artist. I'm always doing solo records and this is the first time um, working with another artist on a complete album and um, you know just gelling together was um, what it was all about. Flow effortless, as well like the weekend, no pressure when we're comfy and decent, set this all beasting, hunting season, and frankly speaking. Nabil, who is the um, director of the video, is really who came up with the concept. I had a lot of ideas about Jamaica and Kingston. He had a lot of ideas about Queens and Queensbridge in New York. And um, just trying to get the right video done was like overwhelming. So Nabil came and said, look, you guys, I'm gonna do it like this. This is how I see it, kick the door open and come in. This is all it should be. And we like. Told that you are a heavy supporter of Argentina. I hope you're not in a too bad mood. Uh, who told you that? <laughs> um, a friend. Oh yeah? You know, I was told some things too. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I, I did like Argentina, but them never pulled through. Germany did well, you know. You have to give respect where it's due. Are you interested in the World Cup as an American or just football? Um, the World Cup, yeah. Of course, the World Cup is... is uh, can't stop watching it. So, um, is it your first time in performing in Cologne, I guess? Do you know what to expect? No, it's not the first time. Uh, we were here a few, a few years ago at this festival. So, first time together though. So, you know, we expect some good energy. And yeah, most of the time, I guess, you play at reggae festivals, you play at hip-hop festivals now, you do it together. <laughs> Do you see any, any difference in, in, in the vibes of a hip-hop uh, concert or a reggae concert? Yeah, because you get the chance to see both together on one stage. We combine two different um, festivals. You got a reggae festival and a hip-hop festival every time we get on stage. It's always fun. It's always different every time we do it. And the hip-hop crowd loves the reggae too, I hope. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. As well as he's saying, basically, that what, what, no matter what kind of festival it is, it becomes that. It becomes a reggae hip-hop festival or a hip-hop reggae festival, however you want to look at it, because, you know, everybody come and support. So, um, your performance today, there are a lot of other big artists here. Your brother Julian is here. Um, perhaps we can expect some special appearances? It would be a surprise, it would be a surprise, you know, we can't make you know yet. Okay, we can only tell afterwards. So, um, I guess that within the last three, four months you gave about a thousand interviews, I can imagine, with probably the ever same questions. <laughs> so, is there one question, Nas, you would like Damien to be asked? Uh. I can't think of anything. I wouldn't want to bother him, man, you know. <laughs> Damien's cool, you know. I just know his his answer is it's cool. Everything he does is cool. So, you know, I'm good. I'm good. And vice versa? Yeah. Why you don't have any questions for me now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was trying to help you out. <laughs> yeah, everything good. Everything good. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about where you feel the current state of hip-hop is at. Because you, you've had some, some quotes in the past about it dying, coming back. Where do you feel it's at today, a few years later? Oh, man. It's, it's at a, um, um, a great 
great time, you know, just just with the fact that I, I still want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of new artists out there that's growing in the game. I think a lot of things that's messed up is if you come out with a record brand new and it blows up too big, that could be the worst thing that ever happened to you. And I, and I think... Um, a lot of a lot of new cats is coming out that's not just blowing up they're taking their time like we're waiting on a drake first album drake's album still hasn't dropped it should be dropping any day now but that's a great thing that it probably didn't come out last year he waited he got into his zone you know what i mean i think that was smart so it's a lot it's a lot that's going on i'm happy about one of the artists i want to ask you about right before we get into song number three is jay electronica yeah Talk to me. A lot of people, I, I know that that's been one artist who's been on your radar for a second now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay Alec is like, he's, he's so focused on all of it, not just not just rhyming, but all of it, like the visuals of it. Um, and he's coming in with his style. He don't care how you, how, what's going on in rap. He's coming in with the way he's doing it. You know what I mean? And it's like the electronica part of his name reminds you that this is going to feel like futuristic all the way and and that's where his head is at this dude is crazy with it so yeah i, I worked with him he produced on my last album at the uh could we curse on the show yeah. yeah the nigga album he produced he produced on that worked worked with me on that record and um you know i've been wanting to work with him some more man so this dude is hard to catch i gotta catch him i got people just started to place my stuff underneath the title political and, and stuff like that but I'm just really doing music, and um, I think that's probably similar with, with, with D. You know, he's just he's just doing music, and he's saying what's in his heart and what's in his mind, and people connect with it. And um, you know, then they give it all kinds of titles. You know what I'm saying? But it's just music, man. But that's saying something. You know what I mean? Music itself really is a politically active organization, if you want to call it so thought about things other than ourselves because music to, to us is given. When you make a song, you give it to the world, it's your song, but when people like it, it becomes their song. You know, it belongs to everybody. I would hope this record could even help some places in Mississippi who are still living like that in the 1600s. Well, I mean, even in the case of what you're saying in terms of the environment and things like this, I mean, as you know, as a Rasta man, I can tell you that my lifestyle and my um, faith then has always been very in tune with things of that nature. You know, where I've always been advocates of, of taking a, a more natural approach to living. You know, and how to how you eat, to how you deal with the place, to how you deal with you know the world. Right. Well, if you want to do something, we're with you, man. If it's positive, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> if you got some ideas. And it makes sense to me or him, we good. 